Hello and welcome back, episode number 6 of the Dream series. This one's gonna be a bit shorter than the previous one, even though the previous one was pretty short in comparison to other ones. But I really have to stop talking as much in terms of like things that aren't really related to dreams. Because it just takes away my time, and there's no point in doing that. Because I want to be more efficient with my time and I don't wanna like make these videos too long. Because then I know people lose the interest with time, like my viewing. Most of the people that view my videos don't view them for longer than 30 seconds. Which I understand, you know, when you come across a channel that you just look at the number of subscribers and the sound of the person's voice and the shitty microphone I use. And you're kind of like, yeah, there's, there's, there's other people I would rather watch. And it's perfectly fine, I don't have anything against that. I understand that's how it's going to be for quite some time, I'm sure. But I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna persevere, so to speak, I'm not gonna stop, that's not gonna discourage me, I'm not doing this for views, I'm doing this because I like to do it, because I like making videos while playing games, I don't know, it's more like I like to talk when I play video games, so I don't wanna look like a lunatic by talking to myself, at least like this I can say that I'm talking to someone else, even though it's not a direct conversation, I suppose, but enough about that, let's get into dreams, this time I have a nightmare I was talking about in the previous episode and i have a dream which i also had tonight that's not gonna match the uh the date of the release of the video but well, for me it was tonight or this morning i suppose so let's get right into it this dream took place in my town at this place where we used to play pool uh billiard whatever you want to call it basically the green cloth table which has holes and balls and you're supposed to use those sticks to put the balls into the holes which i'm not that great at this game i'm not terrible i don't think but i'm not that great but besides the point we were outside of this cafe type place uh, bar i suppose and uh, right next to it is like a paved sites no it's not sites what do you call that uh, a walking path for pedestrians which was separated by a, like a half a meter of grass before the road and the road was like a two-lane road just a regular two-lane road not extremely wide or anything and inaccurate to the reality uh, usually before like depends on which side you go from but uh, if you go from the bar towards like the bus station type thing where usually kids from school would wait for the bus uh, there's usually nothing like th there's a turning right after the bar t towards like an apartment complex but and that, that that street that goes towards the apartment complex is parallel to the bar while the street you know, uh, that the main street is in front of the bar so it's kind of like a uh, what do we call that shape like a reverse l or whatever essentially if you would drive uh, down the main street towards the bar after the bar you could turn right that's basically what i mean towards the apartment complex but this time there was no apartment complexes instead there was a big parking lot right right after you turned right you could turn left to get into this parking lot and further forward was also parking lots why do i say all that because a lot of this revolves around the cars that were parked there. Now, there was a YouTuber in my dream that, that who I'm, whose name I'm not going to mention directly because I don't want to involve people into something that they have no involvement in. And since true, there was this YouTuber and there was the person that was apparently this YouTuber's like best friend type person, like a secondary creator, I suppose, uh, for their channel, but obviously... The, that person didn't look anything anything like like anyone I know this person knows. I don't know. It was just some random person. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that there were several cars parked at this uh, parking lot. And a few of them, like I think two of them were Clio's. Renault Clio. But the older one. Like the smaller one that looks... It's an older model. It's not one of the new ones that has jagged shapes. It's more round. I suppose and it's smaller and this youtuber was uh, riding on a motorcycle and apparently we had some sort of pads 
that look like pads that we could place underneath the cars and make them teleport. And we would make the YouTuber made one of the Cleos teleport onto the main street. And it started rolling down on the main street, but in the opposite direction, like in the wrong direction, so to speak. It was going towards the bar, but it was going on the on the lane it wasn't supposed to be on. And unfortunately for us, on the forward side of the parking lot, not the one we were teleporting cars from, there were some police officers who then like saw the car rolling and went into action, started chasing the YouTuber. I was not near him, I was near the bar, looking at this whole situation basically, even though I was also involved technically, the cops couldn't know that. And I started chasing them, while the other cops stopped the car from moving by, I guess, going inside the car and using the handbrake type thing. And essentially they started questioning me, do I know this person? I said no, even though that was apparently a lie, I knew the person. And there was this other dude on a motorcycle that wasn't a cop that was like, why didn't I stop the car from moving? Which, to which I said, like, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? Like, if, even if I could push the car, I could only push it forwards or backwards. I can't really make the car turn, it's not my car, I don't have keys. To which he got even angrier or whatever, but I didn't care, I just left. I also had a Clio, apparently. So I started driving my Clio, which was the other Clio in the parking lot, which I was talking about. And I don't recall the path I took, but what I do recall is that I caught up to the YouTuber on some intersection and we started like driving next to each other and talking because he had a motorcycle and my car wasn't very wide so we could drive alongside each other or something and we turned into a street that is actually my street well not my street, it's a street that leads to my street and as soon as you turn into it there's a bar to your right and a bit further forward there's an elderly uh, home place where you shove your grandparents in to die, basically. Uh, I know that sounds kinda harsh, but once you can't take care of yourself, it's it's either someone in the family is gonna take care of you, which can sometimes even be dangerous, or you can try to find one of these homes, elderly homes, where you can place them, so they can have some professional care. Uh, sad reality of life is that we cannot kill ourselves with, when we get hopeless. That's very sad, that we have to live on even though life is essentially pain and it's completely unnecessary to go on. Sometimes you even lose your mind and can't remember things at all. Fucked up, really, but this is not the topic of this, okay? And basically we were turning into this street and we got to around like 20 meters into the street where the to the right is the elderly home when a van turned into the street and basically went across the street. I don't know how to say it. He went parallel with the street so he blocked both lanes. And some dudes came out that looked like some kind of gangsters. And for some reason we were walking now. We didn't have our car and motorcycle anymore. And these gangster looking dudes, I say gangster looking because they all look pretty much the same, like same dressed the same way. Which usually, and they had guns. So I was like, yeah, gangsters. Even though we don't really have those in this kind of town. It's pretty peaceful. But I guess that doesn't really matter in a dream. And these dudes uh, started yelling behind us to stop, essentially, to be like, Hey, you cannot run away from us, we have guns, you know, we'll shoot you, come back here. So we did, we did come back towards them. And they started threatening us and telling us that we should give them all our money and stu stuff like that. To which I decided to be a complete and overpowered badass. Not badass, more like simply overpowered. Because being a badass involves, I guess, risking something. But I didn't risk shit because I am immortal in a dream. Once I get to this stage of... Having powers, I literally cannot die unless the, the dream turns into a nightmare and I lose focus and fear overwhelms me. Then I can die. Well, die. Then usually I'll force myself to wake up. But this time there was no, no nightmare aspects. These dudes just had guns and I didn't give a shit about their guns. I was like, yeah, you dudes stand no fucking chance. Like, this is your final warning. Leave us be or I'll kill every single one of you. To which they, one of them shot me. But, of course, it felt unpleasant. Like I said, you don't really feel pain in a dream. It felt unpleasant, but I immediately dismissed this feeling. I was like, yeah, that's just gonna regenerate. I didn't even look where I got shot. I just said that, and I knew that that was going to happen, because that's how it works. And after that, I was like, yeah, now you pissed me off. And I said, all of you should kill yourself with your guns. Yeah, I know it sounds fuck up, fucked up, but it's a dream. Relax. 
and every single one of them except for one dude so basically almost all of them essentially put the guns to their head and shot themselves and killed themselves and the final guy is the only one who didn't do that i guess he was mentally strong or something sometimes in dreams i don't often i don't get what i want all the time i guess sometimes my own mind fights against me or something but this dude didn't kill himself he shot me again but again like i, I didn't give a shit so i basically just we just basically walked away from him he was still in shock i suppose he didn't follow us and now the dream fast forwards like i like to call it basically it transitions into a completely different scenario without any kind of like explanation behind it i was all of a sudden in my grandparents house which is not anywhere i mean it's not far from my house but it doesn't really matter we were inside this house hanging out i suppose the youtuber was also there and at that point i heard like that someone was approaching the front door and for some reason i had a feeling it could be that kid that survived i guess that kid more like a early adult i suppose that he would be coming for a revenge or something so i went towards the door and there was a mirror there's a mirror in my grandparents hallway and i used this mirror so i could essentially see when he opens the front door inaccurately the doors were opening towards the outside usually they open towards the inside but whatever and as soon as he started pulling the knob i charged him and basically pushed the door into him so he fell he had a gun in his hand so i grabbed that hand that, which he had a gun in and basically pulled it behind his back so that he couldn't move i don't know what you call that hold when you just hold their hand behind and, and like in a position that when you can break their hand if they like try to resist that kind of thing and now again one of those transitions happened i was still holding the dude but all of a sudden we were right back outside of the bar you know you make any sense but it doesn't matter and as uh, soon like i told the other the youtuber who came after me to call the cops that this guy should be in jail now and the cops came but surprise surprise they arrested me and some other dude i don't even know who that dude was but they arrested the both of us and put us into a back of a van looking thing it didn't have windows it didn't look like one of those police vans uh, vans that kind of look like a bus just have like railings all over so you can't bust the window or whatever this looked like an actual van and we were tossed in the back and i was like arguing with the officer that tossed me in like why the fuck am i arrested that guy had a gun there was witnesses that i didn't do anything but the cops said yeah whatever i don't give a shit and closed the doors and then we turned into a fruit salad and the dream ended and i'm not even joking i wish i was joking Suddenly my perspective changed into a more like a third person perspective. I was looking basically from the door of the van towards the inside and the dude and I morphed into some fruit salad looking thing and then I woke up. Yeah. That is some weird shit. But that sometimes happens. Shit like that just, I don't know, comes out of nowhere. I guess when I lose focus or something. But besides the point, I was actually remembered another dream I was gonna tell, so I might as well tell it now, since this dream is pretty weird, to say the least. It's also a normal dream, there's no nightmare in it, so I guess I'll push it into this episode as well, and then we're gonna move on to the nightmare. It would be nice to have, like, three dreams per episode, I think that's, uh, that's a good amount. So let's get right into it. This dream, I don't even know how it started, but it was basically in some kind of a place... Uh, that looked like it was in the 1800s era i don't know uh, all the buildings were well buildings the houses were wooden that was like a cornfield people had horses and chariots still but it wasn't like medieval ages they had clothing that looked more recent so to speak not really today's but you know I, 1800s 1700s i'm not sure to be honest and this town our village i suppose was pretty small everyone knew everyone and apparently it was like i wouldn't say cursed it was more like a, i don't know you could call it a blessing i suppose but it was uh the entire town was worshiping some kind of a deity that gave them essentially apparently immortality or something i don't know they couldn't die and 
I was also in this village for some reason at this time. I don't recall what I was doing, but there was this old man, an well, old man, I guess in his early 50s, that said that he lived for way longer than he, than he looks like, that he discovered this secret when he was around this age, and that since then he, he hasn't aged at all, or whatever. And that now has come the time for, I guess, in, in, how do you call that? In civilization? When you bring new people into this ritual type shit, I guess. And he went into the court field, and when he got out, he got out holding a torso with no legs and no arms. And the torso looked pretty buff, and it had a bunch of like, pulsating veins on it. It didn't look freaky, it just looked like a normal torso with a bunch of veins of pulsating. And where the limbs would be, it was just like normal skin over it. And that's when the skin from the neck part separated a little bit, and the dude started like carrying this torso towards the kids, and the torso spread blood all over them. Like it spewed blood. It was freaky to look at from the distance, and apparently once the blood hits you, you become immortal or whatever. That's the blessing of this deity, that is apparently a torso. I don't know. I mean, it, it makes no sense, but whatever. I give shit. Uh, essentially, that's where the first part of the dream ends, and there's another transition. Like I said in the first dream, something that just changes for no reason, and now all of a sudden we were way ahead in the, well, I would say future, because it's not future, it's where it was future in sense that it was further in time than the previous. It was still the same village, it looked a bit bigger, but they had like a tram system, or that like went through the village, which was weird because the village was like 15 houses or something, so I don't know why the hell they had a tram system in there. And I decided for some reason that I was tired of these pieces of shit, uh, because I didn't like the fact that they were all immortals. I guess I was being annoyed that there's others like me or something. I don't recall my reasons. Oftentimes I don't have a reason to go on a massacre. So I basically created a piñata looking donkey. I don't know what else to call it. It was small, it wasn't big, but it looked like a piñata donkey. And I said that this was the item that can instantly kill anyone, regardless of whether they are immortal or not. But it and it worked. It literally just made them disappear, kind of like in that movie, uh, War of Worlds. Is that the movie with the Tom Cruise? Uh, like when the aliens hit people with lasers, and all that remains is ash and cloth and their clothing. Well, this time it, only their clothing remains. So I guess it's more like when the Darth Vader slices that dude. Uh, Obi-Wan, and then only his cloak remains or whatever. Kinda like that. And I literally massacred most of the village, but there was a few of them that apparently this didn't work out. And one of them was the old man. And he said like that I cannot kill him, that he's the closest to the deity or whatever. And that really pissed me off, because there's nothing I cannot kill. So I summoned up my basically go-to kill everything weapon. And uh, yes, I summon it, I even have a chant for it, but I'm not gonna, like, say it here because it's really cringy and edgy for no fucking reason. But essentially I named this weapon Deathbringer. Yeah, I know, very original, very edgy. And the Deathbringer is basically a sight. I know, again, who would have guessed that a weapon named Deathbringer used for dealing death is a sight. It looks like a sight, but it's also like a shadow. It's a shadowy sight. It doesn't have a steady form. Uh, the shape of it changes, and I can manipulate the shape to a degree, of course, within a dream that is very limited, mostly just to uh, switching where the blade comes from. Like, if it comes from the top or the bottom, that's basically all I can do in a dream. Uh, but still, I, it's pretty useful to do when you like swing and then you have to swing again, but you can swing from that side, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I didn't use this at all in this time, because these guys didn't fight back. Because they were sh sure that their god or whatever would protect them. But I killed them and I killed their god later on, but we'll get to that in a short while. Essentially, I confronted the old man and the two others that were apparently immortal or whatever. Still, I couldn't kill them. So, I took out the Deathbringer and the what the Deathbringer does, or how I constructed it to work in my dreams, is whatever I slice with it, I don't really slice it, like I don't cut through them 
in a way that like I could have cut them in half or whatever. But whatever I cut starts bleeding shadow. And essentially the shadows enter the Deathbringer, as I call it, and absorb them. I basically turn them into shadows that then get sucked into my weapon. And it works pretty well in a dream because it's not that complicated of a thing to imagine. You might imagine something really cool or really lame, but essentially it looks like smoke. A dark smoke that comes out of them and then comes into the weapon. So it's not that hard to imagine. And it doesn't always look consistent at all. Sometimes there's no smoke, they just disappear. Sometimes the smoke looks weird. You know, it's not consistent. But I sliced the old man a few times with this and he essentially turned into a stone. He turned into smoke, but when he was like gone, what remained was some kind of like stone type thing, which to me was very weird. And I wasn't sure whether I actually killed him or not, which pissed me off, but I sliced up the other two. And then I went into the cornfield and sliced up their torso god, I suppose. But uh, all of them remained these kind of stones on the ground. Kind of looked, I wouldn't say stones, it looked like granite stones. Kind of looked like they had some kind of a pattern on it. I don't know. It was an odd dream. I woke up soon after that. It's freaking as hell. I don't know. It's one of those dreams where I get angry for no goddamn reasons. A reason. And then I kill everyone. It happens way too often. Way more often than I want to admit. But don't take that as a sign that I'll become a mass murderer or something I want. I am quite capable of thinking that killing people really doesn't do anything. So there's no real point in doing it. And aside, like going to jail is not what I want from my life. I want to make video game videos. I know, what a goal. But anyways, we'll move on before I start. Before I end up on like 10 lists for psychopaths and whatnot. I'll just move on to the nightmare. <laughs> now because it's already like 22 minutes of this video. This video is already longer than the previous one. So I'll just hurry up with this nightmare. Because I don't really recall this nightmare that well. The only thing I recall very well is that I ha was living in this apartment looking place. And that my roommate liked to wear denim shit. Like he had jeans. And a denim top like shirt or something it's not sh it's like button shirt you could button it he looked like he was straight out of the like 90s or 80s i don't know when that thing was popular when people wore like trouser material for top as well but it was popular at some point he looked like that and he went away somewhere and i decided to play some kind of a board game that i found oh excuse me for a second damn uh, the board game, I don't even know what it was about. I know that there was fields that if I stood on them, I would sacrifice someone or something like that. It looked green and yellowish. Like the fields were, some were green, some were yellow. And it looked like you could roll a dice or something. So I moved uh, through these fields and landed on a field that was apparently a sacrifice field. And I was like, yeah, whatever, it's a board game. But apparently it wasn't just a board game, it was some sort of a cursed board game that triggered some kind of a sacrifice ritual and I guess someone got killed. That was the implication of the dream, but I that never saw anyone die. And after that is where the nightmare starts. Uh, it's kind of like the ghost started hunting me or something. Stuff started moving on their own, I didn't see anyone. And I heard voices calling something, I don't know what the hell they were talking about, but they were saying something, stuff was moving. I got freaked out and I woke up. But I woke up in the same place where I had the nightmare at. The only difference was that now my roommate was there. And I told him like, you know this board thing, I played it, it was cursed, I don't know, ghosts, blah blah. And he was like, yeah, you're fucking insane, you're crazy, whatever. But that's when I heard the voices again, and I saw like hands coming out of the board. The hands looked... They didn't look like your normal human hands, they looked more grayish and translucent, kind of like ghost hands, I suppose. But at the same time, way smaller than you would expect a human hand to be. And I freaked out, and I woke up again, in the same goddamn place. And this time I couldn't find the board, because apparently it was in a box, which I found out a bit later when the roommate told me that he packed up some stuff because 
he was tossing like some sort of garbage away and one of the garbage items was his board and I was kind of relieved because I knew that now I couldn't be haunted but as soon as I thought that the hands started coming out of the board that was in the box so they started coming out of the box and I freaked out again and that's when I actually woke up for real I know this was kind of short but I don't recall that many details of it essentially it was some kind of a cursed board that spawned ghost hands and ghosts were in it I guess and they were moving stuff I know it doesn't sound as scary when I tell it a lot of my nightmares don't sound as scary when I tell them because I suppose you have to be there to actually feel the fear it's like when I always say like people say like people that have hallucinations and shit uh, which see people things that aren't there you know some people say you know you just ignore those things if you can recognize them like if it's some sort of a monster or whatever you know just ignore it it's, it can't do anything to you but that's easier said than done because even if you when you wake up in the middle of the night and you look around your room and you see something that's not supposed to be there you're gonna freak out i don't care what it is if it's a freaking deer like you know you just walk, wake up and it's a deer in the middle of your freaking room and you're on the second floor and the doors are closed and the window is closed you're gonna freak out regardless if it's a monster or a deer because even even if you know that the deer is not real you're still gonna freak out trust me because even if it can't hurt you physically things can still hurt you mentally like you can still uh, I don't know it's kind of like a dream I suppose uh, I had like experiences with uh, sleep paralysis and where I would like hear someone talking to me and feel like someone's standing on me or like pressuring me it has a feeling it's not a real feeling it's kind of like a dream feeling maybe a bit more realistic than a dream feeling but still a feeling that isn't accurate even if you feel pain during sleep paralysis it's not really pain it feels similar but it's not you can discern the difference but you still feel it and it still freaks you out so I don't know where I'm going with this to be honest I'm just trying to explain that Nightmares are like subjective to when you experience them because the feelings you feel you cannot really replicate them Like you cannot tell them I at least can't But anyways, I'll end the episode here. I know it's kind of abrupt ending, but it's almost 28 minutes So I don't want it to, to prolong it too long And uh, thanks for watching this episode of the dream series. I think it was number six And I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully soon enough. Goodbye